I can still hardly believe it. I recently had the great fortune to speak directly with Jacob Collier on a Zoom call and ask him a few questions regarding reharmonization, his guitar arrangements, and tips on how people like you and me can access his seemingly limitless vocabulary of musical options in our own playing and songwriting. This is 15 minutes of pure, unadulterated wisdom. There are many, many lessons in here that simply roll off his tongue that I plan to unpack in short lessons in the future. But for now, enjoy this conversation. Let's get to it. Okay, let's plow on and take a question from Mr. Justin Roth. Hello, Jacob. Hey, Justin, how are you? Greetings from Colorado. I'm looking forward to seeing you here in May. Oh, fantastic. Can't wait. First time seeing you live. Oh, terrific. Brilliant. Yeah, well, um, my question is, uh, you kind of touched on, you were talking about Little Blue a little bit ago. My question is, is specifically kind of about your acoustic renditions or versions of your songs. They're really kind of what, what really sucked me into so much of your music. I'm a singer songwriter and acoustic guitar player. And <clears throat> sad to say, I've been playing in altered tunings longer than you've been alive. <laughs> but I, what I've really, really loved is uh, just what I've learned from your tuning uh, is you know how you are able to use inversions to support voice leading on the guitar, which is not very common on guitar. It's like you've brought it to the, this to my awareness in a way that I haven't had before. And so I've gone I've gone in. And I've been making transcriptions and uh, guitar tutorials uh, on YouTube of, of your acoustic versions of your songs. And I've been able to un unpack what you're doing on guitar and how you play, mechanically speaking, like what your hands are doing. But the thing that always uh, gets me and what I'm so curious about with your music and your process is beyond what you're doing, I'd like to learn the why behind like the non-diatomic diatonic harmonic choices that you make and how one might learn the vocabulary mm. to to incorporate that into, into our own music because like I feel so hardwired for diatonic Western music and like when I hear it in your music or other music my I've always had an ear for it but less of the yeah. understanding of knowing how to get there in a non jarring way and aside from you've talked about using pivot notes and things like that but kind of like what's What's the, the way that you kind of enter into the, all the possibilities of what you could do? You know, and if you need a, a song as an example, like the second pre-chorus of Little Blue, like where do those options come from besides what you can just automatically hear for those of us who don't just hear it? <laughs> I, I get it. It's a great question and I'm, I'm really glad that you asked it. Um, I think, uh, you know, I spent so many hours as a, as a kid literally figuring out like every option for every note and every bass note. So I, I would sit, I mean, really at the piano, I, I would say it's actually harder to do this on the guitar as a bassist, for me anyway, uh, and I fully commend you. Uh, but I think on, on the on the piano, you, you see it all laid out, right? Um, I don't think I can really hold the, see if I can hold this and play at the same time. If I unplug the, can, can, you, can you, can you see the piano right now? Not the keys very well. Oh, how about that? Yep, that's better. Okay, so so okay, so take the note G, right? So if I'm in, if if I if I have any bass note, say I'm in, you know, little blues in E flat, right? So I I would sit for hours and I'd figure out every single say four note chord with these two notes on either side. You know, and then I get and then I get exhausted and then I go up to the next bass note. Try and find stuff. Same string for F, and you go through every bass note, and in the end, you 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 kind of your mind starts to make make sense of shapes. One one important thing to to remember and realize that I've kind of I, I often forget, or at least I, I used to forget when I was younger, is that when it comes to reharmonization, you, you don't need to play like a crazy chord like you know, or you know, all these kind of wild these kinds of chords. You can actually just do like a triad, and sometimes the most disarming choice is actually just a triad, but it's, it's not the triad that you were expecting. So in Little Blue, you think it's going to be A flat, because you heard A flat before, um, there's an expectation that, you, that you're going to play A flat, but you, you mentioned that the pivot note thing, 
if there's the third of the chord on the top of the chord, it's actually it's a, it's a good opportunity to pivot to a different triad. And so what I do in, in Little Blue is that I, I, I go down a few different crossroads. So it goes... Or... Right? So say we go with this one. Or either of those two things could work, right? And another option here is B minor. Right, which I love so much, it's one of my favourite moments of Little Blue. You think, okay, I'm, that's enough. But no. Right. But I'm never, I'm not playing any chords here that are, are more elaborate than just like major and minor chords, you know? <coughs> In inversion, I think inversion is like a massively underrated principle in in, in forcing your chords because you know the, the idea that you can you can pivot the expectation not only to a different key but but to a different sort of a placement within that key is is like truly interesting to me. So you know the idea of see I'm improvising in E flat. Oh sorry, am I uh, am I am I a bit, am I a bit stuttery? Oh no, maybe that's a bit better now. Let me just move this. Okay. Move this stool just over here. So yes, yeah, so, so if I'm in if I'm in E flat, I'm just hanging in E flat. I, I suppose it's it's just about being open to something from the side. And again, thirds are really great pivot points. But if I go um If I enter C major with the with the G on the bottom, like it just feels so different from from having to modulate to like C major seven with with, with C in the root. You know, it's like it, it just feels dramatically different. There's another song I wrote called Once You, which is on uh, Jesse Volume One, and the the bridge or chorus to that song sort of goes. Um, favorite kind of games and passages is, is this is exactly the same principle as little blue um, pre-chorus too in the sense that it kind of goes your ear sort of thinks it's going to go there because you're in C to start with but you can pivot in really in really in unusual directions with with the, the right melody note another thing which I'm, I'm sure you know as a guitar player um, and if you don't I'm really excited to share this with you and for all of you but it's just like the, the total magic of diminished chords as as bridges but pivot points and bridges so just to quickly explain if I play this diminished chord here and I, I can lower any note in this diminished chord and it will lead me to a different destination so if I put the G down to an F sharp it takes me to B if I put the B flat down to an A it takes me to D if I put the C sharp down to C, it takes me to F. If I put the D, E down to E flat, it takes me to A flat. And that might have just sound like a bunch of toddle to, to a lot of you, but the, the, the truth of the matter is that uh, diminished chords are, are very powerful, but they're also triads in disguise. Because, you know, if I play A major, for example, or A7, then that is this diminished chord, as it is implied. So I can actually go from A major straight to E flat major and it's not that surprising because of that because of that 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 diminishedness of, of the whole thing so so sometimes it's it's about finding yeah, the right the right pivot points and I mean to be completely honest I can I can describe stuff I've done and I can talk about devices and pivot point stuff but the the real kind of art of it I think is just about like delighting in in the unexpected and I've just been so obsessed about the unexpected for so long and how to continuously defy my own expectations of where things are going to go that you end up with devices that are as much emotional as they are technical d devices as to how to disrupt flow and how, how to how to d disrupt things you know and obviously it helps to have a like a, a great big library of, of interesting chords um sort of bittersweet dark bright strange angular sounds um but a lot of those are, are not even so much about the, the actual key that you're in or the chord that you're playing it's about as you say the inversion you know, so if I, if I play a, if I play A minor like this, right? That is devastating. Wow, you know, you've got these two things are fighting. That's just wild. That's so different from you know from from, from something like 
you know, or you could say that's also A minor, right? But it's a completely different, different, different inversion. Or if I go, right, that that's it. That's such a, such a different sensation uh, from, you know, and it, it it just comes down to like the the distance between notes, the the ways in which those notes re re relate to each other. Um, uh, and I mean, I could literally talk for hours about this, but the, the last thing I'll say is, when it comes to guitar playing, um, par partly because I'm most harmonically fluent in this tuning system on the bottom three strings, and not so much on the on the top three, so I tend to leave those as they are, which means there's constantly pivot notes. You know, you'll, you'll hear me do a lot of that kind of stuff. And what that means is I'm, I'm almost always limited to a triad. Um, the tuning of this guitar is, is yeah, it works. D, A, E, A, D. So it's quite an unusual five string guitar. Um. And that, that was like the thing that I discovered when I started to dig into your songs and see what you were doing. I was like, oh, it's, it's all right there. He's using the droning strings or the pedal notes of the top two strings. And everything else is, unless you sometimes use your pinky on the upper strings, but it's basically triads everywhere on the lowest three strings. Right. Which, yeah, triads are so me, the map, I was like, it's all right there. I can see the relationships. Now it's like trying to get find the inner permission to, or, you know, when when do I know to go there? You know, so that this is, uh, this yeah. is so amazing because I just love seeing that it's really gone back to triads. Like if I watch, if you, or even an experienced piano player, you have 88 notes and here you have five. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> really, you're doing most of your harmonic content on three of them. And then the pedal notes are the, what changed the character of the chord. So it's really been a really great roadmap to kind of see the way in to think about how you hear these chords and how they're connected. Oh, that that's wonderful. I mean, thanks for asking the question. It's, it's, it's really an important one. Um, I think yeah, the guitar has taught me a lot about being being resourceful because it's so easy as a piano player just to be like, oh my god, like, you know, like bund bundles of notes and stuff. But on the guitar, you know, like being able to navigate with three parts like that is great. One one massive inspiration of mine is a man named Ted Green. I'm, I'm sure you, you've come across, but if you haven't, I, I don't. It's just amazing, and he, he only ever made one album, which is called Ted Green, and um, it's just it's just a, a totally phenomenal piece of work. It's it's such a such a masterclass, and if you're as much a fan as I am of, of pivoting notes and, and and all all of that kind of stuff, then I think you're gonna you'll be in for a total treat. Um, yeah, that he does a rendition of "Send in the Clowns," I think it is. Okay. And uh, it's God, it's just it's just absolutely absolutely wonderful. Okay. Um, well, that, can, again, this has been quick... it's been such a treat, and uh, you know, I, just as another thing regarding your you know harmonic, the way that you build off of triads, it's as a guitar player, it's so refreshing to be fall back in love with what's possible with the left hand instead of thinking to make guitar parts interesting, it's in the right hand. It's yeah. like it's really bring, bringing it back just to harmonic um, instead of technical, like technical hard to play kind of stuff that's been really fascinating for me oh wonderful i'm 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 truly truly glad to hear that and um yeah i, I think part of it's because i can't do very much picking in my right hand so i tend to just i like, use my ears more than you use my brain you know and that, that mm -hmm. can sometimes lead you right but um yeah I, i'm yeah as i say um massively appreciate the, the question and i i've i pulled up this this uh, send in the clouds thing. I'll, I'll drop it into the chat um, but I'll, I'll just play you like a really quick, I'll play the, the, the very, the very, very first bit. Also, for those of you who are concerned, I've just, I've just learned that my interview has been pushed by 15 minutes. So we are still going to have time for one more question. And then the albums of the, of, of the, of the month, you'll be, you'll be glad to know. <laughs> um, this is, so this is the Ted Green. I hope you can hear this. Okay. Um, I, I'm, I'm watching an ad quickly. Here we go. Uh, here we go. Oh, is it this one? It's, 
it's just it's just so so gorgeous. There, there's one more. I think it's this one's the one I actually meant. There you go. So he pivoted, right? And again, in a second. special and he's he's literally he's literally the man i'd, I'd really recommend you all check him out <clears throat> he's also my number one harpeggi influence even though he doesn't play harpeggi i i want i want to play harpeggi like like him because he's 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 the man you know uh, well thank you so much for your time this has been a real treat Cause you're not so far away. I hear you say